Okie doke, the final video of the module on technological change and growth. And it's about directed technological change. So let's see what we've got. What do we mean by the direction of technological change? So technological progress drives productivity growth. Productivity growth can go at different rates in different sectors. When this occurs due to deliberate effort, we call it directed technological change, DTC. <coughs> oh no, here we go again. Consider labor hours per ton of wheat. <coughs> How do you think that has changed in Sweden over the last 200 years? Oh no, I found some data on this. <laughs> now I can't remember. I can't remember it. Ah, should have written it down or put it in the footnote. Never mind. What about GDP per person? So GDP per person over the last 200 years in Sweden. Oh, I don't have that in my head either. But that's gone up by maybe a factor of 15 or 20 perhaps labor hours per ton of wheat would have gone down by a lot more okay so we've had very rapid labor augmenting technological progress in food production okay think how incredibly labor intensive producing wheat would have been 200 years ago pretty much everything is done by hand or maybe with the help of horses you know now so imagine like one farm a small farming family might be uh the farm might be like a hectare or something <laughs> i don't have the exact numbers these days one person like my colleague hans can easily run like a, a hundred hectare arable farm on a few hours a week you know just as a as a hobby you know, have a full-time job doing something else and still maintain a farm with 100 hectares of, of wheat. So, much more rapid technological progress in that sector than on average. If you think about the universities, <laughs> how much more productive has teachers at universities got since 1800? <laughs> I guess since COVID, we've got video technology and stuff. But, well, things definitely haven't changed as much as they changed in the agricultural sector, right? So things go at different rates in different sectors. What about light? This is one where it's very easy to measure. Consider the energy rather than labor now. Think about energy. Energy inputs needed per unit of light. We can measure this, right? We know how people produced light typically 200 years ago. They burned like, uh, what do you call that in English? <laughs> Tal. Um, ah, I can't remember what it's called in English. I am English, by the way. Um, never mind. They burnt sort of very low grade um, stuff, wax. And it sort of burnt with an orange smoky flame and gave off a bit of light and like 99.9% .9 heat. Now we have LED lights which are generating 30% of the energy going in is coming out as light roughly or 20%. Either way, we've got an efficiency increase by a factor of about a thousand. Okay. So that's a sector with incredible technological progress. In general, we become hugely more efficient at manufacturing goods, extracting minerals and cultivating food. So, meanwhile, the numbers of people working in these sectors has fallen, right? Because we got so efficient at producing this stuff. Obviously for food, you know, with farmers have got hugely more efficient but we've still got the same area of land, or actually we're cultivating less land, substantially less, like 20-30% less than we were 50-100 years ago. 
So clearly the number of farmers needed is going to go down extremely steeply. <clears throat> So all this hand wringing about, oh, all the farmers going out of business, <laughs> it's really, it's just technological progress, right? We need more, if, if they're going to have something to do, we need more land. <laughs> Somehow we need to uh, <clears throat> pave over the Baltic or something or turn the Baltic into agricultural land if we're going to have more farmers. Or, of course, we can go like in Japan and have a sort of turn farming into a sort of highly, highly labor intensive sort of cottage industry where each apple is carefully tended and so on from the moment it appears on the tree. And then of course food will be immensely more expensive than it is today. Okay, so obviously it makes a lot of sense. We are consuming a lot more manufactured stuff we're consuming more food as well but the technological progress is even faster so the employment in those sectors goes down <clears throat> and employment in the sectors that where productivity doesn't grow as fast goes up like in education healthcare and so on Okie doke. So that's a bit of general stuff on the direction of technological change. What else have we got? Yeah, we don't have much more on it really. So we got this, I'm going back to this figure, I think, yeah, that's the figure that we've already seen, I think. Then we throw in some different sectors. So now we've got some different natural resource sectors. If this is energy, this would be oil, coal, renewables. We've got different sectors for production. This is more the manufacturing sectors. This could be like service sectors. And in all these different sectors, technological, technology might change at different rates. <clears throat> and of course, this is extremely important if we want a green transformation of the economy, for instance. We want technologies to improve in the renewable sector so that the renewable energy gets cheaper and we can substitute away from these dirty industries. We can also imagine that households will shift their consumption patterns away from dirty energy or resource intensive goods into uh, less resource intensive goods that might also be good for sustainability and it might also have to do with the direction of technological change okay so that just gives you a bit of an idea about the direction of technological change that that is an issue and again we'll return to it later in the course. So I think that's it. We've got an overview of economic growth and technological change. And before too long, I'll put some study questions up on Canvas, which I want you to prepare in groups. We'll work out exactly how that's going to work well in advance but we're, I want you to prepare those answers to those questions in groups, which we'll start off the class with <laughs> whenever that is. I don't have that in my head right now as I'm recording this video, but I look forward to meeting you for the first time in a few days anyway, relative to when I'm recording this, which is the 28th of October. <laughs> okay. Thanks for listening so far.